Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Adani Khan Sessions Q4 FY22 Earnings Conference Call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator pressing star and zero on your telephone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Nene Singh from JM Financial Corporate System. Thank you and over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Adani Transmission 24 FY32 Earnings Conference Call hosted by JM Financial. We have some management side today, Mr. Anil Sampana, MD and CEO of Adani Transmission Limited, Mr. Rohit Soni, CFO of Adani Transmission Limited, Mr. Kamal Mehta, CFO of Adani Electricity Mumbai Limited, and Mr. Vijil Jain, Lead Invest Relations. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anil Sardana, CEO and MD, Adani Transmission. Thank you and over to you, Mr. Sardana. Thank you so much and uh, good morning all the friends on the call. Welcome to Q4 FY22 results call. Like before, uh, let me all wish you good times and uh, I hope uh, all of you are doing well. Let me start with the technical performance and confirm like before, uh, we continue to maintain uh, uh, average availability both in our transmission and distribution businesses. Also, underlying the availability is the fact that the power system needs all these assets like never before. We are all privy to the fact that the power demand has indeed grown much higher than what was predicted before. In fact, uh, the Q4 uh, demand is 11% for our distribution business in Mumbai. And of course, uh, the year, the energy demand improved 3% year on year, and we expect that to be close to about 6% in the coming year. So, um, basically, our companies and our players, I think it's time to maintain their feet at highest availability, and I think that's what uh, is our endeavor. Uh, so, coming to the uh, other operational aspects, we maintain a high level of collection efficiency both in our distribution and transmission businesses. Also, the distribution losses for the year were 6.55%, which is again something that we ought to be maintaining going forward because uh, we virtually become a benchmark. And uh, moving on to the way that our growth paradigms in the operational side are panning out. We had about 1,100 kilometers during the year to get to about 18,800 kilometers. We are well on our way to conclude the current financial year, hopefully very close to our target, which is close to about 20,000 kilometers plus. So during the year, we also got the awards from Karur uh, in Tamil Nadu, Khabra in Gujarat, which is again a very coveted job because as you are all aware, it's a 30,000 megawatt RE site and this is the first connection of the site and we are very happy to be engaged with such a coveted site. And then of course, the state MP transmission project. On the, moving on on the financial side, um, you know, we, we have to record uh, 
very good cash flow uh, growth. Uh, in fact, um, uh, you know, I keep uh, seeing media wanting to only report the fact part. And I, since I'm talking to our analyst friends, I would want to say that we are very clear that considering a lot of non-cash prospects like different tax or like mass market, it's always proper to talk about cash profits. So we registered 19.4% year-on-year growth in quarter four. In the cash profit, data grew by 17.5%. And, and uh, therefore, the future continued to be as robust as before. Similarly, for the year, uh, you know, the data as well as the uh, uh, cash profits grew, and uh, both the transmission and the distribution businesses uh, the growth was registered. So the EBITDA for uh, transmission, you must have seen, has grown 17.8%. Uh, CAT grew our transmission business by 7.6%. Distribution EBITDA grew by 19.8%. And the CAT was down on account of the mark to market or the forex movement which uh, was there. So about 32 or crores. Coming to uh, the growth paradigms in the days ahead, because many of our friends uh, do ask this question, so let me cover it for the benefit of all. We have a pipeline of good opportunities of about 52,000 crores in the next 12 to 18 months, out of which 18,400 is at the RFP, RFP two stages. And uh, the uh, uh, projects, therefore, are there for us, and all of you are also aware that we have a very healthy pipeline with us, close to about 19,000 crore, which is already in the bag for us to execute over a period of next two to three years. So we continue to pursue to make sure that the pipeline remains as robust. And uh, for those of the friends who are keen to know about our CAPEX, we have always declared we will do close to about 5,000 crore a year. And we have maintained that in the year that went by, the 2022. We went up to 5,000 crore capex, about 3,400 crore odd, plus in transmission, about 1,600 crore odd in distribution. Uh, similarly, that will be the guidance for next two to three years in the coming. On uh, the ESG aspects, which has been a very robust commitment of ATL team, We've been doing a lot of initiatives with regard to, uh, you know, kind of uh, actually actioning things on the ground. One of the first ones to get on with the sustainability link bond successfully at our employee operations. That worked well for us. We made two APIs there, and uh, uh, all of you are familiar that how we are going ahead and converting the bulk electrons to green ones so that we get both uh, load factor matching as also tariff competitiveness because the renewable comes at a much competitive price on a hybrid basis. We are also one of the first few companies in the energy sector to get the CDPs, uh, which is the climate uh, uh, disclosures aspects through the science-based previous initiative. And therefore, uh, you know, it's like getting our indicated and monitored through uh, world-class accreditation agencies. So both the SAP Global as well as the SAPI through the climate dis uh, disclosure protocols will give us that leg up in terms of how we will do. We have also become signatory to UN Energy Compact for putting the, the sustainability development goals. And um, for affordable and clean energy is the platform on which we are working. And therefore, uh, these are the aspects which are clearly taking us to making sure that there are there is oversight of external agencies on our uh, initiatives. And we will continue to pursue the ASG agenda on all three planks of environment social, as well as governance, and we are very happy to have received recognition in this regard from various uh, agencies, including uh, CII and 
SNP Global and uh, you know uh, MNRE facilitating us on the Energy Compact goals. So, and and uh, similarly the social agenda to make sure the quality of life uh, improves for communities around our establishments, and that we continue to cater to the larger needs of uh, the subject. So I'm going to stop here and um, we'll be very happy to take your questions. Uh, I thought uh, this would be a good overview of how we are following a balanced agenda to make sure that the team uh, clearly uh, pursues all their uh, goals uh, in a way that the operational aspects, the growth paradigm, the financial discipline has also the uh, aspects related to ESG uh, are all worked uh, the eyes equally focused on these. I want to also tell you on the fiscal side that the discipline on the ratios has been steadfast. Uh, we continue to maintain that um, uh, really as we were committing before. And therefore, whether it is debt service coverage ratio, which is still close to about two, and our net debt to Vita continues to be uh, 4.7, much below 5.5. That's there for the industrial grade. So all in all, uh, uh, continuing to maintain the rigor that uh, we have been maintaining in the past. We have all seen uh, uh, that's been recognized by an international investor. IFC is going to be putting the money. We've got all the approvals in place. Uh, money should be in our bag, uh, in our account as a primary in seven to three days time. And therefore, uh, uh, you know, that gives management the, the uh, flexibility to deal with the potential that we had taken from the promoters as a part of uh, which we had kept as a very deeply surrogate modern instrument. And therefore, besides learning that, we will still have at hand cash for us to look at uh, our growth pipeline. So friends, thank you and look forward to your further questions and give me the opportunity to supplement uh, the communication that uh, I have tried to cover. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we'll now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question, may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Mohitri from Dam Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, Good morning, sir. Congratulations on the raising the money in such a tough environment. Uh, thank you. Uh, the, so my first question is broadly, you said that the usage of money is going Sorry to Sorry to be... interrupt you, Mr. Mohit. May I request you to speak yeah. a bit louder? Yeah. Is it better now? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So, so, so the, uh, the money you have raised, sir, in the, uh, uh, raised to be used to retire the promoter date, right? And I believe that prom promoter date is, uh, unsecured perpetual security is somewhere close to 30 billion. Is that number right? So we'll be left with 8 billion, uh, additional money for our growth requirement. Is that understood correct? More to your bank, right? Uh, so on the last year, the transmission trading has been pretty muted. Uh, what is the expectation for the next uh, 12 months, if I think we expect the trading to improve? Uh, last year, I think it's trading only for 20, 20 billion. So pretty low. That's, that's correct. Because uh, because of the COVID, a lot of green projects got surrogated and delayed. Now, as you know, the government of India gave them first five months, then three months, and then another three months. So therefore, uh, you know, that, that delay, eventually they didn't want transmission lines to, to be there and for the projects to quickly keep taking payment without the 
then using those transmission lines it's for that reason that the government took the call that uh, you know let the whole thing come to sync with each other so so that's the reason why uh, some of those projects were intentionally not allowed but i guess now we see uh, some of the state projects in mp rajasthan uh, up uh, those uh, getting on with the uh, the rena has also some of the green projects are once again uh, getting to come back so there as i said about 18000 is already there uh, in the building phase line and the balance of the 52000 will also come through in these days ahead uh, mohit what is most important is we have to maintain uh, our internal pipeline which should be two years ahead uh, we don't want to also have too long a pipeline because as you know commodity prices are uh, on a on a day to high day to for us to not get exposed to that for long and therefore today we have uh, 15500 crore of orders in hand so we have a very healthy pipeline and as you know uh, we talk about 2000 crore of uh, capex and uh, this this pipeline does not include the uh, 16 1700 crore that will go in distribution that is extra therefore we are quite comfortable today and we will want to make this uh, pipeline continue at this level and this too sir what are the capital expenditure incurred in fy22 and out to fy23 yeah i i told you that we did uh, upwards of 5000 crores okay okay uh, uh and the difference between uh, distribution and transmission is 500 crore which is zoom for the transmission 400 plus 1500 plus how the demand how the demand behaving in april and may and how are we meeting our demand in terms of long term and short term pickup is this available and and our and our high peak capacity which we had of we expect this class to come online okay so as far as the demand is concerned uh, you know it peak beyond 1000 megawatt at the mumbai operations uh, during the month of april now Uh, most of it today is being uh, met through long term contracts that we have from Danu as well as from the other contracts and also uh, from the short term contracts which are fixed as you said out of the hybrid that we had contracted for 700 megawatt partial capacity has come on board which is the solar project uh, the rest of it uh, will come on board progressively as stock uh, so so today there is uh you know kind of uh, challenge for us to manage our capacities because we don't want to stay only short term and therefore uh we are looking at doing medium term contracts as well uh, which can give us a big benefit of uh, the short term prices being around 12 rupees or so that's the way that we are trying to manage our load curve today uh, but we, we we are managing our our demand profile uh without any load shedding in mumbai mm-hmm. what is what is the status of award for 7000 uh, uh, 7000 crore work of hvdc system has it been awarded no so the bids have been done and uh, the award is round the corner as we have said last time that we will award by end of may and uh, we continue with this and it takes three to four years to commission the project is that i don't understand it is four years from the date that the regulator approves so now we are targeting from now onwards something like uh, 28 months and this is the thank you and all the best thank you thank you mohit thank you the next question is from the line of apurva bhaji from invest please go ahead uh, i thank you so much for the opportunity
even the right no no purva you are seemingly at a very bad uh very bad network patch because your voice is now even cracking uh i i will get back in israel from italian again please thank you so much sorry about that thank you thank you so this question is from line of pain vakil from incred equities please go ahead uh thank you for the opportunity sir uh, i just wanted to know a little bit more about our net debt position which is around 250 billion and uh net debt to ebitda is somewhere around say 2.98 so how do we foresee it uh, going ahead in fy23 like are we planning to reduce the net debt or are we planning to keep in the same ratios yeah, so our net debt is about uh, 20 270 billion now and i'll give you exact figures 27 billion and sorry yeah so if you take as of march 2 it's actually 25 billion uh, 250 billion sorry and uh, the 80 billion is the cash and bank balance so so that's what the exact numbers are and our uh, ratio as i said was about 4.7 okay and how do we uh, like uh, do, do we have aim to maintain it the same Uh, ratios 5.20 or we are like uh, planning to it will change sorry uh, the ratio is 4.9 my fault i was reading a wrong column okay thank you for the clarification uh, so how about so 4.9 uh, for f23 as well yeah we will we will always uh, try to be below 5 as i always said in fact we would our internal target is 4.5 so it's only because of the uh, inches now that we are getting i think money uh, you know we will have the advantage of uh, you know some of this debt further retiring uh, so so we will our internal target has always been put as management so whenever we reach that we always tend to think it backwards this is great to know uh, that's all from my side so now i'll join the follow up thank you sir thank you thank you Remind to the participants. Anyone who wishes to ask a question, you press the hand button. The next question is from the line of Apurva Bahadur from Investec. Please go ahead. I hope my voice is clear now, sir. <laughs> yes, I am also hoping so. All right, now it's okay. Go ahead. Great. Uh, so, um, so you highlighted that uh, there is uh, a sharp increase in Mumbai demand. Are you looking at tying up medium to long term thermal CPS uh, given the volatility issues with renewable as of now? So, Purva, uh, yes, the demand has increased and demand is likely to be higher in the coming times also. We are not looking at tying up long term thermal CPS. We are looking at certainly long term green CPS, but we will look at medium term thermal CPS. So that is what is our desire at this stage. And sir, may I know the tenure for medium term that you are looking at? Five years or less than that? No, 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 not that long term. I mean, in fact, uh, you are right in terms of definition that medium term becomes up to that period. But uh, we are not looking at uh, medium term more towards that side because uh, anything above a quarter is medium term. We will set. you know matching the load profile because mumbai also sees seasonal variation so we are trying to construct the medium term in such a way that we don't go too long because our uh, 50% commitment for the end of fy23 with the green electron space now uh, when uh, sorry 30% so that space so therefore a large part will get covered through that we already have dhanu with us we already have the other pps on the uh, on various other uh, smaller pps so therefore we should be able to manage with a bit of incremental part but, uh, the period and the tenure that we are trying to still decide uh, will be in the range of a year or 18 months okay fair enough sir uh, 
are also only uh, given that there is a hopefully a sustainable rise in peak demand and we are seeing not just in Mumbai, but across the nation. Uh, our understanding is that the distribution infrastructure requires an upgrade to, right, to match the load uh, requirement. So, are we factoring any of that in our distribution capability? And if not, then how much could be the upgrade over here? Is there still capacity required for this? So, Apurva, I think you touched a very important point. Out of the 1,500 to 1,800 crore band that we have kept as distribution capex for each year, almost 900 to 1,000 is actually in distribution. Now, the reason why it is there is because it had a lot of gaps with regard to the network relation. And that's exactly what has happened today. And even the balance that we are trying to do in transmission, uh, close to about the rest 600 odd crore, is towards making sure that we are able to create more receiving stations closer to the customers and locations where the peak demand has been increasing because of air conditioners and because of commercial establishments mushrooming. And you'll be happy to note that uh, we are working towards some of the innovative solutions in Mumbai, where even underground substations are envisaged today because uh, you know very clearly that in Mumbai getting land is very difficult. So we are working towards making sure that we get solutions where we will take land, which is perhaps, uh, you know, playground or uh, green area, we will build underground situation and maintain the playgrounds and the green areas for next 20, 30 years for the benefit of the community. So that's the kind of innovation that we're putting in. So, uh, yes, it requires the network to be upgraded, transformation to be upgraded, and those are in the office. It's a very helpful. Uh, last year, I think last time when we spoke at the end of previous quarter, uh, you had highlighted that CEA or some agencies working on a long term transition plan for for integration in the world. Is there any update on that? Uh, what type of opportunity are we looking at? Indeed, in fact, uh, uh, um, towards the end of April, in fact, uh, if I recall, 27th or 26th of April, we had a session with uh, Chairman CRC participation of uh, Joint Security Transmission Government of India, Chairman Power Grid, uh, Chairman of several of the states, on the general network except, if you remember I had about that, yes, that uh, you know, that's a concept that's been in the works for a very long time. And I'm happy to state that uh, there was a general consensus that that now needs to be rolled out. And Chairman CRC, uh, Government of India has always come out with their uh, policy on that. CRC has come out with a draft paper on that, and Chairman CRC, who presided over that discussion, uh, informal discussion, mentioned that they are now working towards making sure, because they've already done the public hearing, etc., uh, to come out with the final uh, regulations with regard to general network. And once that happens, then planning will happen, as I said, uh, bottoms up, where every customer will therefore have right to get access to power from whichever source they want. And uh, this is going to be then taking us to come in par with all the developing nations which follow this concept. Okay, so we'll, we'll wait for some more time, sir. Hopefully, this is the clarity of my uh, The last question is on the Electricity Amendment Act. Uh, any expectations? <laughs> See, I, I guess uh, we should rather, uh, you know, kind of uh, stay clued on to as to how parliamentarians will, uh, will uh, how soon they will find priority to clear the Electricity Amendment Act. Uh, last, I only know that uh, there was additional consensus built after the farmers' movement when uh, some of the aspects related to uh, uh, to, to uh, issues related to the free power, et cetera, were dispensed with, um, as also issues related to how the regulatory commissions will be appointed in the states. Those two provisions were amended. And now it's once again there 
before the parliament and the truth that uh, gets cleared soon. Uh, because at least the state's consensus has been built. This is what is our information. But uh, all of us have to stay uh, with our ears to the ground in terms of when do the parliaments find, parliamentarians find time to include this issue. Right. Got it, sir. Uh, thank you so much for, for all the clarifications. Very useful. Uh, all the best. Thank you, Abhurva. Thank you. Participants who wishes to ask a question, you press star and one. The next question is from the line of Rishikesh Sindhika from JM Financial Services. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, good morning, team. Uh, thanks for giving me this opportunity to ask the question. So my question is around privatization of the distribution sector. Are there any new circles to block for the same? And how soon do we see this opportunity materializing as far as our business is concerned? Right. So Rishikesh, uh, I think this is this is a subject that is very close to us. And uh, yes, privatization of distribution, let's deal in two contexts. One is UTs. So as you know, that uh, Ministry of Power has again revived the privatization of UT after they had privatized the first two, uh, which is the other Agar Haveli as well as Sandigarh. And now those two are settled, so they have taken up the rest of uh, UTs also, including Lakshadi, Pondicherry, uh, Andaman, Nicobar, uh, and few others. In addition to that, uh, the state of UP is once again reviving after the recent uh, uh, wins by a particular party. Uh, they have once again revived the aspects of uh, privatization. So I will mark that kitty as one way to bring uh, changes or reforms in distribution. But I guess um, we are very clear that as far as uh, Dani uh, ATL's quest to get into distribution reform is concerned. We are going ahead with applications on distribution license soon enough for the shortlisted locations that we have worked on. And uh, so, we, therefore, we are neither waiting for the act amendment nor are we waiting for uh, the, the privatization. We will apply for second license and hope that uh, with the current, current provisions in the act, uh, we should be able to register our case. Uh, let's hope for the best, and you will soon hear those announcements. Thank you so much, sir. That would be very helpful. So, my second question uh, is around the 2 dc line. So, uh, we have that cat in the world today. Uh, can you throw some number around the capex which can be in FY2020 regarding this developed project? Yeah, so that will be CWIP only, while the, the, uh, you know, the capitalization won't happen anyway. Because uh, the capital numbers during 23-24 will be in two parts. One is the AC, uh, you know, substation that is, that is going to be there, and the other one is going to be advances, mostly to uh, the contractors who are going to be soon appointed. Uh, so, so therefore, on the HPC front, you can expect something like uh, 550 to 700 crore as the capital for. Uh, okay, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, that was all from me. Uh, all the, the other, the other part that I thought I should have covered and done justice in terms of the uh, ref distribution reforms. Which I might just not just talk about privatization, but uh, the reform part uh, is related to smart meters. You must have read government's uh, desire to pay 25 crore meters by 2025. Now, that's a whooping outlay of 2.2 lakh crores that the government has assigned for this cost, uh, which is a part of the new uh, reform agenda of distribution that uh, the government has uh, launched. And uh, about 80,000 crore plus worth of uh, tenders are already out in the market. And we have decided to partake in that because uh, we believe that as a system uh, solution provider, we, we certainly can uh, look at this because the government is not wanting only the smart meter to be put on the, on the system, but for it to be maintained for 10 years, 
making making sure that it is working well. And we thought that that's a that's a holistic solution, and therefore, uh, system solution providers with us have a role to play. And I'm happy to tell you that we are targeting a, a good share of market uh, in the smart metering agenda also. So I thought I will add to what you had asked. Thank you so much, sir. That was really helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Participants who wishes to ask a question may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Abhishek Modi from MG Global. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, am I audible? Yeah, Abhishek, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. You had spoken about smart metering. Just want your idea that uh, in terms of implementation, how do you see? If I'm right, what I was able to hear upon the call, that the uh, new uh, tariff for the electricity policy is yet to be passed by the parliament. So, how do you see the implementation? And also, can you give some guidance, if possible, of course, on revenues? Maybe just so the revenue will help in improving your receivables largely. As far as our receivables concerned, Abhishek, that's not an issue at all. We've been collecting upwards of 100% because we've been collecting even the uh, uh, LPS, so therefore, late payment charge. We, we have therefore been uh, doing well on receivables. Coming to the country, per se, uh, which is genuinely an issue, and therefore you rightly touch the fact that how would smart meters help? Now, the way the government has gone about making standard bidding documents, they've created two distinct aspects through which smart meters could be secured. One is to buy a solution end to end where the bidder, or really like a developer, because it is on a managed service basis, we call it tax. That means you're doing OPEX, KPEX plus OPEX, both. Responsibility is that of the developer who puts in the money, puts the meter, gets the meter reading, and gets it on the annuity basis. Now, annuity is in two parts, as I said, the way it's been questioned in the tender. One is where the solution is uh, listed, uh, where you have to do end to end in terms of accountability to getting every meter reading right. And the other one is where you don't do OM, you just provide that, and ultimately the OM is taken care by the Com itself. Now, most of the people are going with the first one. That means they're going with the holistic end-to-end -end agenda. And that augurs well for the sector because if they had the expertise, they would have done that on their own. So they are not taking any chance. They are wanting the developer to be accountable for 10 long years, which will mean 120 months of meter reading is what one has to facilitate. And seamlessly that 120 months of meter reading can be provided by according to me, best provided by the DISCOM experience there. So those who are with meeting experience, et cetera, who have a lot of challenges managing things on the ground. Uh, we have had long years of experience in terms of managing our distribution, so therefore we are very well suited to manage that, and that's why we've launched ourselves for that. And, uh, and the turnover, fortunately, is very good in this, as also the management is very good because you pay your service, get the meter reading automatically from the meter, you get all the intelligent information. You also have consumer data. So you can do a lot of other add-on services that you can provide with the approval of the customers. And therefore, to us, it looks like a very good business and an interesting business to get it. Yeah, I get your point. My question was largely pertains to in terms of smart meeting, there are three paids, if I'm right. So, receivables will be early for Adani, or how is it? No, no, so again, you're mixing up Adani and the business. As far as Adani is concerned, the smart metering that we are doing at 7 lakh locations, we are buying 7 lakh smart meters in Mumbai. And that's primarily for primarily for Eastern Zone, where 
uh, you know, we, we still have challenges of uh, uh, selection and challenges of there. We, by the way, a smart meter is very easily convertible to prepaid or post. You should have this uh, application. So therefore, uh, don't go by the uh, feeling that it has to be only prepaid. Uh, though, of course, the government of India's preference is prepaid. But since we have, in most of the location, no collection issues, uh, we don't have to therefore lock, stock, and barrel go with only prepaid options. We will use prepaid option in areas where we have challenges, for example, thumbs or uh, shanties where, uh, or denser areas where people still sort of take advantage of the fact that they consume and then delete value payment. For those areas, we will take prepaid option. Otherwise, we will use postpaid option. Balance prepaid meters which are going to be deployed across the country. Again, we are seeing similar type of combination that uh, various states are adapting. So they are not just following with just prepaid options alone. They are looking at something which is more flexible, so that they can see the area, do the segmentation, and accordingly tell us where to put what kind of solution. Unfortunately, in smart meters, that's very easily possible. Yeah, my because my query was largely with prepaid. I think you got you uh, you have answered it correctly. That there is an option for flexibility to it postpaid, and in terms of shanty towns or irregular payment areas, you will prefer to have a prepaid option. Yeah, thanks for the answer. Perfect. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mohit K from Ram Capital. Please go ahead. Just one clarification. Can we have such a large target of you know a smart meter? Do we have enough capacity in the country to you know uh, for this huge capacity to take off, or do you think uh, if we, there is a need for more smart meter manufacturers? Well, a beautiful question. In fact, uh, smart meter is not just a meter. Smart meter is uh, a lot of stuff, including backend software. Uh, you know, uh, plus the uh, network uh, in terms of the fact that either it will be uh, latched on to the existing 4G, 5G networks or it could be a LoRa network or it could be RF canopy that you have to create. So a lot of things goes alongside when we talk about smart metering solutions. So your question is very pertinent. The answer is no, we don't have capacity all across. We don't have capacity first starting from the chips, then we don't have capacity on various other aspects that I talked about, including head end, back end uh, solutions. And the good part is coming through very quickly, IT, which is the IT and uh, Ministry of Electronics and IT infrastructure, has clearly uh, started to review this. And there is soon going to be uh, productivity link incentive on this regard also. They are saying very clearly that we don't want most of this 2.2 lakh crores to be, uh, you know, sourced from outside. So they are clearly looking that while the initial ones could still have a good amount of volume coming from outside, but eventually they want to make it in India. So very important question, Mohit, you raised. Thanks so much for that. Because uh, uh, it will be a matter of pride if India indeed starts to work on a fab plus the head-end, back-end, RF, all of these solutions in-house. And I'm sure our competence should be possible for us to manage. As far as Rani transmission is concerned, do we, uh, is there any uh, for us to increase our, you know, internal capabilities in the smart metering, maybe uh, in the software or somewhere else, uh, which can uh, improve our margins? Mohit, again, a very pertinent point. Without uh, divulging too much, I will only add to say that the Dani transmission is clearly uh, working with associates. At this stage, I will use only that word. Where the arrangements are being made as if they become one-to-one uh, -one associates in various aspects of the value chain. Uh, because if it's going to be that large a volume, we want stability, we want acceleration, we want constant research and 
making sure that through applied search things are improved over a period of time so we are quickly and clearly working on each aspect of the set understood sir thank you all the best sir thank you thank you Ladies and gentlemen, this was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Nay Singh for closing comments. Thank you. On behalf of JM Financial, we would like to thank the management of Adani Transmission and Adani Electricity Mobile Limited for allowing, allowing us to host the call. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anil Sabana for closing comments. Thank you, and over to you, Mr. Sabana. So thank you once again for organizing this call, and thank you, friends, for joining us today uh, for the Cube FI22 call. Uh, I look forward to the Q1 FI23 call, and uh, we hope to have your feedback. I must add that your role is very important uh, for us to have uh, outside in perspective, and for us to learn and keep making sure that we maintain. Uh, not just the growth paradigm, but our discipline in terms of fiscal and operational performance. So do join in and do provide your valuable feedback and your input, and we value that. Uh, up until then, keep well, and thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. From the of the International, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may have to connect your lines. Bye-bye.